much. So we're ready to get started, everyone. Here we go. Okay. Call the hearing to order. May 13th, 7 o'clock, North Cannon Town Hall. Continuance of public hearing, Honey Hill Project. Um, why don't we go around and um, introduce ourselves, because I, I know I forgot that last time, and we'll, we'll see alternates at the same time. But if you want to start, Doug? Doug Jones, commission member. Walt Schneider, alternate. Jesse Bunce, alternate. Pete Brown. Vice Chair. Michael Connor, Commission Member. Good morning, CEO. Okay, so we are seating Jesse and and Walt. You guys are all set. I think what I'd like to do first is just remind any do you guys know how many are on Zoom, Paul? I'll take four right now. Okay. I no, just no. want to remind the, the people on Zoom that if you wanted to um make a remark or a comment, you're certainly welcome to do that. I just have to use the raise hand um, feature on the Zoom and you're more than welcome to uh, be part of this meeting. Uh, okay, any additional from you, George? Sure. <clears throat> okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for the record, my name is George Johannesson from Allied Engineering in town here. Um, representing uh, Honey Hill Development Company, LLC, in this application. Um, at the last meeting, um, the neighbors of Highland Avenue came out very strongly that they do not want to see the road paved to meet the town standards or the possibility of increased traffic on their road. Um, we listened to those concerns and we spent a lot of time looking at options to see if we can resolve the issues and make things better for everybody involved. <clears throat> uh, the idea of using Pete Road, um, which hasn't been a town road for almost 100 years or maybe over 100 years, uh, would not meet the regulations and would actually force all of the cars from the subdivision to drive right behind all of your houses. Um, so that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, one of the options that is allowed in the regulations involves proposing a loop road that would be 3,000 feet long and it has to have 600 feet clear area in the middle for lots and a collector street 750 feet long from the town road to the loop road, although the commission has a right to vary some of those numbers. Um, but not only would this require a complete redesign of the development, it would require clearing substantially more of the lot uh, maybe some blasting involved um, and more grading <clears throat> and would make the houses closer together and closer to Highland Lane. There would be no limit on the number of houses either, except for septic regulations. The other option, which we've chosen to try, <clears throat> is we've submitted a letter to the commission asking them to consider a text change in the subdivision regulations. That would allow us to eliminate the repaving of Highland Avenue and would create a cul-de-sac just prior to entering the lot that connects the big lot to Highland Lane, although it's all one property now. The existing gravel drive that exists there now would only be for emergency vehicles. Uh, nothing else would change with the lots themselves. And hopefully the commission will be accepting that letter tonight and setting a public hearing. Um, other than that, I have no more to say tonight, uh, except that we have granted a 65 day continuance of the public hearing so we can resolve these issues. And we still have not received comments back from the consulting engineer since December. So um, that's really all I have for tonight. Um, and then we'll, we'll go into the details of things as we move through. Thank you, George. And that uh, exchange request is in the regular meeting agenda, which will be after this, this public hearing. So stay tuned. Okay. Written comments. Let's do those at this point. So this is reading into the record. 
Um, River Woods subdivision plans on behalf of the Houstonic River Commission, we are writing to express our comments in response to the River Woods subdivision applicant plans. The HRC has concerns with the impact of this subdivision on land management obligations as enacted by town governance in partnership through Litchfield County. <clears throat> Based on shared engineering plans, our site visits, communications with local, state, federal, and nonprofit partners, and our review of federal wild and scenic river best management practice guidelines, HRC, raises the following concerns. Wild and scenic management considerations. This stretch of the Houstonic River is a federally designated Wild and Scenic River, which requires that the Houstonic River Commission act and advise with precedent according to the mission of Federal Partnership Wild and Scenic Rivers. Partnership Wild and Scenic Rivers are wild, are wild and scenic rivers that flow primarily through non-federal lands and are jointly managed by the Na National Park Service and local state and regional stakeholders. Management of PWSRS is locally led and driven by municipalities, state agencies, nonprofits, and land managers. The Housatonic River Commission is the organization partnering with NPS to lead management along the Housatonic. For more information, please visit the National Park Service Partnership Wild and Scenic Rivers website. Given management practices, the HRC is in agreement that current plans for this subdivision project violate pertinent natural resources and land management principles. We would like to clarify that should plans for this project impact the bed or banks of the river up to the ordinary high water mark, formal notification to the National Park Service will be required. In addition to permitting regulations, this federal designation obligates the HRC commissioners as appointed by town governance to advise according to best management practices. In review of the engineering plans, Natural National Park Service partners have noticed the plans to use hay for erosion, and sediment control on site. Best management practices suggest against this. So we advise in favor of straw instead, given its efficiency in erosion control. North Canaan overlay zoning obligations with consider consideration to wild and scenic management practices. The Housatonic River Commission advocates for the necessity for the North Canaan Zoning Board to uphold zoning overlay rules. The HRC is an appointed group of land management representatives that were enacted by the towns along the Houstonic to work in coordination with planning and zoning. North Canaan Planning and Zoning should consider enforcement of these overlays as a condition of approval for this project. Particularly, we have concern for impacted for forest and river corridor overlays with the current plans for this subdivision project, which necessitates a consideration of aforementioned overlay obligations. Please see attached maps below, which visually depict the McGever property boundaries encompassing inner and outer Housatonic River Corridor, along with designated core forest habitat. These maps show that the entire property is within the inner and outer corridor, North Canaan zoning overlay. Given the interior corridor overlay with consideration for outer corridor and four forest zones, we would like to request information as to how the purchases of these subdivision lots will be made aware of the zoning purchasers, I'm sorry, of the zoning overlays. Additionally, how will the construction process not impact these overlays? We request 
as, as should planning and zoning official documentation of plans for a conservation easement with markings at least every 50 feet of a depth of at least 50 to 100 feet to protect the riparian buffer to offset the land intensification that this project will create. Particularly, the HRC advises that planning and zoning require the site plans indicate an easement that either falls on a single land parcel or is contained within one. This is necessary for long-term land management and meets the requirements for legal right of access. A protected corridor depicted in engineering plans and adopted by future HOA ordinance is necessary to federal wild and scenic management in addition to the HRC's local management obligations in the zoning approval process. Okay, various maps. Um, these will be available at the zoning office during hours. George, if anybody wants to come up and see these, more than welcome. Given the concern for a protected river corridor, the Housatonic River Commission would like to request that each homeowner will come before the HRC again, should HOA governance become active on this prospective property, the HOA itself should also come before HRC with proposed rules and principles. Additionally, we would like to seek clarification on the project's land protocol for the disposal of dirt and rocks during excavation for the construction of houses within the subdivision. Should any homes require fill, we are interested in understanding the measures in place to ensure that the fill is free of all invasive plants, thus minimizing ecological impacts and avoiding the bed and banks of the river. We would like to inquire, inquire about the extent to which impervious surfaces will be incorporated into the development. Considering the slope towards the river and the importance of water management strategies, we are particularly interested in understanding the planned measures for managing water runoff and if there are any plans to establish preventative measures, such as rain gardens to help control runoff. Additionally, we would appreciate detailed insight into the plants being considered for this development, including consideration of native and non-native plantings and their specific identification. We request information regarding any restrictions pertaining to lawns within the subdivision. Specifically, we aim to understand the nature of these restrictions and their intended impact with interest in preventing fertilizers and chemicals from leaching into the river. We understand that land intensifying project, projects with lawns and impervious surfaces accelerate water runoff with increased siltation and possible fertilizer contamination of the river. Archeological significance, in addition to natural resource Management, the Houstonic River Commission upholds the responsibility to the history and cultural significance of the land along the Houstonic River. To our knowledge, there has not been due process for archaeological concerns in certain land areas of this prospective subdivision project. We, re we request official response as to what survey surveying has been done in the area in regards to archaeological concerns. We also request a revisit of archaeological overlay zones, necessary steps prior to significant land modification. Okay. First light energy partner concerns. The Housatonic River Commission would also like to reiterate the concerns of our partner organization organization First Light Energy. Should this project impact land within the FERC project boundary, permitting issued by First Light 
will be required and will be out of the jurisdiction of North Canaan's Planning and Zoning Board. Please see the attached boundary for any possible future concerns. We would like to express our appreciation to the North Canaan Planning and Zoning for reaching out to us for our advisory <laughs> as mandated by town planning and zoning boards throughout the wild and scenic stretch of the Houstonic River. The HRC recognizes the possible significance of this expansion project in regards to market and community value. We also understand that the wild and scenic Houstonic River provides equal cultural significance for <clears throat> communities in Litchfield County and necessary ecological resources for wildlife resilience. We would wow. like to see these values remain and that care be taken throughout this construction project to recognize. I see these. I just looked in the wild. Okay. Thank you for your efforts for valuing the input of the Houstonic River Commission in this matter. We look forward to an official response. Okay. And I have one more. Vice Chairman Planning and Zoning Commission, North Canaan Town Hall, Riverwood Subdivision. Dear members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and this is from HVA, by the way. I am writing on behalf of the Houstonic Valley Association to express our deep concern regarding the proposed subdivision off of Honey Hill Road and Highland Lane. This subdivision proposal is situated in an ecologically significant area along the banks of the wild and scenic Housatonic River and within a 250 or adjacent to the river. The planning board has broad latitude to require terms and conditions that need to be satisfied as part of its approval process. We encourage you to consider Article 1 of the Town of North Canaan zoning regulations as amended and made effective March 17, 2023. I draw your attention to the following excerpts from Article 1, Intent and Purpose. B to protect the state's historical, tribal, cultural, and environmental resources, E, to maintain and encourage the agricultural, industrial, commercial, residential, and environmental qualities of the town in accordance with the town plan of conservation and development, and F, to maintain and promote access to clean water, welcoming the safe and safe places for public recreation and enjoyment pedestrian friendly village centers, schools, transportation, and communications infrastructure and other public amenities consistent with the town plan of conservation and development. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the town of North Canaan's 2018 plan of conservation and development, POCD, underscores the importance of preserving the town's natural landscape specifically Vision 2 aims to support farming and natural resources. With goal two, emphasizing the need to preserve land with prime agricultural soil, open space, recreation areas, and scenic views that define North Canaan. EOCD, page 22. With these principles in mind, we urge the commission to consider the following terms and conditions should you approve the proposed subdivision. Conservation easement. The commission should be provided the opportunity to review a fully negotiated conservation easement to be held by an identified qualified conservation entity, such as an, an accredited land trust. This conservation easement must cover one parcel with access from Honey Hill Road for monitoring and for public access. It must safeguard the conservation values, including biodiversity and other ecological values, water quality, scenic values, and archeological and historic values. Key terms and conditions for protecting these conservation and va values, but include but are not limited to no structures or improvements, 
other than those related to a public access trail. No pruning, clearing, or cutting of trees for any purpose unless such tree is deemed a hazard by certified arborist. With fallen trees left on site as habitat and no alterations should be permitted to the banks of the river, except for planting native plants for the purpose of stabilizing the banks. A qualified conservation entity, such as an accredited land trust, will ensure the conservation easement protects the conservation values and that the terms and conditions are monitored and enforced. Archaeological survey, the applicant provided a professional thorough archaeological review from Mary G. Harper, president of the Archaeological and Historical Services, Inc., indicating that portions of the property likely to have indigenous archaeological sensitivity. Ms. Harper indicates that most of the archaeologically sensitive areas lie in the relatively level portions of the property nearby to the Houstonic River and are therefore largely encompassed by the proposed 300-foot conservation easement area. However, Ms. Harper indicates that the proposed houses and septic systems on the west and northwest sides of the proposed new roads and additional spot areas in the north and south proposed lots may all contain areas of archaeological sensitivity. It is our recommendation that these areas be, be defined on a map and that prior to any disturbance in the areas outlined by Ms. Harper, a professional archaeological, mm. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, recon, uh, you try it. Reconnaissance? Yeah, reconnaissance, reconnaissance survey, sorry, sorry. Mm. be conducted. And appropriate next steps taken if the presence of any artifacts are confirmed. Scientific review. The applicant also has a review completed by Connecticut's Natural Diversity Database, which houses the state's database on rare, threatened, and endangered species. In correspondence with the Natural Diversity Database program, it was indicated that there are two species of upland plants that may be present on the property and whose habitat considerations may not be entirely encompassed by the 300-foot proposed conservation easement. There should be a complete survey of the property by a qualified botanist for these two plant species, and if found appropriate conservation measures taken. We appreciate your time and thoughtful consideration. Sincerely, Julia Roberts. Roger, I'm starting what they are. They're in your MDDB letter that you have. We're having a survey come in. Okay. <clears throat> okay. If you want this one, do you want to look at um, No. Okay. okay. That is it for. All right, now we are continuing public comment. So anyone that wants to speak, if you would stand up, um, give your name. Anyone wanna? Everybody, Christian? No, I was just waving to somebody, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, friend on the other side of the river on the other side of the room, so there you go. <laughs> okay, nobody on the Zoom? No, lots right now. Okay. I, I have. I have. A, Go ahead, Brian. A, a question. I was a little unclear about what needs to be changed with the zoning regulation that would allow their focus act. Um, I know. Do you want to answer that? that or, no. Oh, yeah. That, that's going to be a public yeah. hearing. Um, oh, we have to wait for a public hearing. Wait for mm -hmm. yeah, just, Brian, just give us a minute till we get to the regular meeting and we okay. can we'll talk more about that. It's almost kind of a separate uh entity from the subdivision and oh. and well 
let us just get to the regular okay. agenda. Okay. And there's also um, a space for public comment on that agenda. At the, at the, the following meeting, the public. Yeah, as soon as this okay. meeting is brought to continuance, then we're going to immediately go to the uh, normal normal meeting and that's where it's gonna be. Okay. All right, so just give sure. us a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, okay, we need a motion to continue the public hearing. Make the um, motion. Make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. 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 All right, all those in favor? All right. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, so Sorry. there was a question that came through. Okay, it said uh, this may have been reviewed in the regular meeting, but was it hard to hear that the proposed change to the road slash pavement would there be? Where would the cul-de-sac be? I'll let you answer that, George. I don't know. For the road. No. <laughs> okay. Right there. So it's like a little road in the map. Can you turn it up so you can see it as well? Can you explain that to the that's the Zoom question, right? Yeah. So this is the road comes through here, and originally we were coming down here and then going out Highland Lane. And now we would stop the road right here with the cul-de-sac, and then the little gravel driveway that's here now would just be for emergency vehicle access only. And, and how do you how do you propose to Limit that to only emergency. I mean, would you? As well as we can. Um, okay. We haven't really discussed that yet, but yeah, it could be a change, could be a signage, could be. <laughs> Let's wait till we get into the okay. that uh, piece of it, if you don't mind. Just so you know, but my concern is because my piece of property is right at that junction. So you would want more detail, yeah, obviously. Detail. Yeah. Let us just get to that piece, okay. though, if you don't mind. Okay, so we were halfway through a motion. We Do we vote? Yeah. Those in favor, aye. Right. Okay, it was just kind of. Give it a date. No, I'm, um, I'm getting there. <laughs> Next regular meeting um, at 7 o'clock. Let me find the date of that. Give me one second. I was going to do that, George. That would be June 10th at 7 o'clock. Okay. Okay, I think we're good for that meeting, correct? Am I missing something? I don't think we have to vote that date in or no, we don't have to. For the public okay. hearing, yeah, we have to vote on that. And I'll... that's what that motion was okay. to yeah. set a public hearing, right? No, well, it was the, it was to continue. It. We have to make a we're motion. Continuing the public hearing on the time. Okay. Yeah. So we're good, right? I think that. So you need a motion to continue. Did you get that? You did. I think that's what we just said. Yeah. Have voted. What's that, George? You just haven't voted. Huh? Okay, so all those in favor? All right. Anyone opposed? Nay? Okay. Carry. Okay. So, I'm going to call the regular meeting, planning and zoning. Before we do that, then. Christian, are you still a representative who's time for river management? I'm one or two, yes. Okay. Is the current plan that was from 2006 still? Or have you updated a lot of it? So uh, it's still in effect, and we're in the process, beginning the process of updating. Okay. Yeah, we're. Can I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is an informal. I'm asking if I have the current who's time for a management plan. You have the one that is currently in effect, and since we uh, got in the, our designation, it's a partnership river, we are rewriting our management plan okay. at the time. But this is what we have. It was, okay, yeah. so that, that's I just wanted to make sure I had the most up to date one that's out there. Okay. Well, this is an informal before our meeting. It's a. It's um, a I want to make sure I had the proper. Okay. okay. Are we ready to start? Um, call the order. Regular meeting. 
Planning and Zoning, May 13th, North Canaan Town Hall. Uh, we've already introduced everyone. Uh, Jesse and Walt are seated. Um, opening remarks, uh, Tim couldn't make it tonight, so he asked me to, to chair it, obviously. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, has anyone had ever everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from last month? And if someone would want to make a uh, motion to accept, make a motion to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? Second that. Well, second. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from last month's meeting? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. George, CEO report. I had sent out the report. Everybody hopefully has had a chance to review it. And for the record, I uh, issued permits for 57 Rod Bottom Road as a change in use. I received an application for 203 West Main, which I denied, and the applicant took it to ZBA. And 29 East Main Street, I also denied, and that also went to ZBA. I attended a hearing on 422. I attended the ZBA meeting at 426. I did site visits and letters of compliance issued for 362 Norfolk Road and also for signs at Community Health and Wellness. Okay, thank you, George. Okay. Old business, we have Riverwood subdivision. Does anyone want to? discuss anything concerning that at this point. Um, do you all have the start for a management plan? No. Okay. I believe it's available. Um, Christian can give us some website where it's available. Mm -hmm. um, just review that. Um, it has a lot of impact on this. Um, yeah. Y'all should have it anyway. Okay. Much what I am. Um, Sounds good. Any other comments at this point? Or it explains a lot about inner and outer corridors, um, things such as that. Uh, areas which are of high interest of the Hispanic River Management. Um, areas that they listed with their exception, and when they wrote them in two thousand six, one way or another. The Honey Hill area wasn't listed in there. Area of high concern. On the opposite side of the river was. Agricultural land. Wetlands sets it at 100 foot, right? That, uh, North Canyon Wetlands sets their up on review area. A new word we need to use um, at 100 feet. Um, who's down a river management plan sets theirs, their inner corridor at 100 year flood line. So, George, do you have that on your map down here for like that? Okay. For the continuance of the hearing, I just wanted to make sure the members had access to this because no, those are good points. I feel it's going to come into play. Mm -hmm. So you should read it, understand it. <clears throat> if you have questions, we have Christian is our town representative for the Hustonic River Management Plan. Um, I'm sure you'd love to answer questions. Happy to. Okay. All right. We'll move on then. Everyone is good. Okay. New business. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong in Eaker. Yeah, yes. That was right. <laughs> um, special permit, bed and breakfast. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Anne Decker. I live on 15 Honey Hill Road. Um, I bought this place five years ago. 
I renovate it and I love it. I love interior design, I love antiques. And so it has been a very fun project. And um, I live by myself in this big house. And so I would like to be able to rent out two bedrooms and one bathroom as a, a bed and breakfast. Well, basically it's for Airbnb. When I say bed and breakfast, it's because I would be happy to offer a breakfast, something very basic, continental breakfast in the, in the dining room. Um, I think that the opportunity to welcome people in North Spain and to uh, let them discover the area. Uh, personally, I love this. Uh, I love this area. Uh, I love going to antique stores, and so that could be the opportunity to uh, welcome people and to uh, let them discover uh, Kenan and uh, and the surroundings. So that will be a maximum four people. That's only two two bedrooms. So. Uh, not a lot of people, not a lot of traffic. I will be there. I won't let anyone in my place without me. I'm very, uh, very picky regarding everything in my place. So uh, no strangers, no big groups. Uh, just, uh, just maximum of uh, of four people. Okay, thank you. And George, the application is complete, correct? The application is complete. Okay. So we need a public hearing for this, and I would ask for a motion for a public hearing. I'll make a motion for a public hearing. Okay. And breakfast. Second. I'll second it. Mike, second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I guess I should have said the date, right, George? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll learn. <laughs> So that would be next regular meeting, um, June 10th, immediately following the other public hearing. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, she knows about the green card thing. Yes. And all that. Yeah, we'll okay. Do. Okay. Next item is AEA's Request for text amendment. You guys, <laughs> did you want to cover more of that or? Um, well, basically we've submitted a letter asking you to modify the subdivision regulations uh, to appease the concerns of the neighbors by allowing a longer cul-de-sac than is listed in the regulation. And also to change the number. Oh, and then number of lots, yes. Yes. <clears throat> so does everyone, does anyone have any questions on that? Yes, Sue. What, what regulation is that? What's the number? B1.1-A4. Say it again. B1.1-A4. Thank you. There was a limitation on the number of lots as to whether you could have a cul-de-sac or not. And we want to take into consideration the impact to the Highland Lane people that have talked to us last meeting, everybody was here. They do, I'm sorry. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it makes sense, but what what they're talking about doing is going from ten units to well, putting twenty units on a cul-de-sac, and going from a thousand feet to going to thirty-six hundred feet. That's what it amounts to. Well, twelve. And and it's not to appease the people on Highland Lane; it's to make their application compliant to zoning regulations. Not to appease us, it's to follow your rules. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. 
why don't we talk about that at the public hearing? Okay. All right. And when when was that? No. We haven't actually set that no. up. So yeah, yeah. Set that yet. Okay. Okay, so you're set for now. Okay. It's so application protection. So what's that? It's an application protection. Yes, yeah. application for a text amendment. Public hearing would be um, May 30th, okay? If we could have a motion to have that meeting, well, then I'll make it, whoever. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Sorry. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The motion reads. Mm -hmm. Request for text amendment. A public hearing for a request of a text amendment right. set for May 30th. May 30th at 7 o'clock, Sarcanian Town Hall. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, is there any other public comment? Anything anyone has? Yeah, I'd just like to make mention of one thing for the commission to consider in the future. So now that the Hoostock River Commission has achieved wild and scenic funding, projects that are within 600 feet of the river bank and one quarter of a mile up from a uh, river into a tributary are eligible for wild and scenic funding. So in North Canaan, that's 600 feet along the Hoostock and one quarter of a mile up from Blackberry. Okay. Anything else anyone has could be on anything. Okay. That wouldn't be something for us, would it, Christian? That would be something for the applicant or yeah, the person proposing. Yeah, but it's good to have in the back here, mind. Anyone else have anything else? Okay. Then we need a motion to close the meeting. Motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. Back up a little. Back up. Yeah. So I do have some questions. And maybe uh, question might be able to answer. Oh, question I didn't have. I didn't know if I should bring it up at this meeting. Maybe. It's this first light energy. Well, that may need permit. I want to know what FERC and what the application and what the FERC.